In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I installed this Hoy Miles combiner box down to an AC disconnect and the entire process step by step, even the connection into the main load center. This is the official start of taking the in phase system out and putting the Hoy Miles system in. Now that I have all the breakers turned off here, we have the main AC switch turned off outside and the breaker turned off in the main service load. We're safe to take this off. I'm actually gonna disconnect that uh, main service 45 amp that I turned off and just kind of get that completely out of the way because I gotta change the breaker for the new solar system that's going in. And before we do anything, we want to make sure to check the circuits for each one of these branches coming off the roof to ensure that the rapid shutdown is working correctly. So we have no voltage there, no voltage there, and no voltage there. This one should not have anything. So all the power is off to everything in here. We're not re getting any reading on that. So we're safe to work in these panels. Because if we did have a reading, it would show something like this. And I'm gonna be able to keep the AC disconnect for the new Hoy Miles system that I'm installing because the wires are sized appropriately for that. So I basically only gotta take off the combiner box here and then the solar system that's on the building over there and then put the new solar panels and run the wire in the conduit, which I've already done and put the new combiner box here and connect everything up. So let's get started with this. I'm gonna break these loose first. These are not very long, so I'm gonna take them out by hand rather than using a drill to take them out. No more in phase. And in the new Hoy Miles combiner box, is your CT scans. This is something that is not provided or wasn't provided to me with my Invase combiner box. And you have these brackets that you'll put on the back side of the combiner box itself to attach it to the uh, wall or whatever you're attaching it to. Also, you want to pay attention to that opening there because this seals up with that right there. When you put it in, it gives it a nice waterproof seal. I'm going to attach it like that. And then once you find your placement, you can use this style of bit or this. This is probably the most recommended, but I found from experience that I like using this bit. I just take it easy and take it slow. First wire that you should always hook up is your ground. Even when there's no power, it just makes it best practice to do it that way. So we're gonna get this up through there. And it's gonna be our first connection into the box. And technically, there is a torque guide right here. So that's what you would torque these down to. And I'll have to come back a little later to check the torque on these, but I want to get my initial connections made just to show you guys that this stuff isn't real, real hard to do. And I'm going to use the same breakers that I took out of my in-phase unit to use here because these are eaten BR breakers, and these are 20 amp breakers. These circuits are not gonna have over 20 amps coming in on them. Um, this is properly sized for the circuits that I've created. I'm gonna have four in this one, so I do have to get another one of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and install the three that I have. I'll leave one wire out. So we'll just put these in place 
and we'll have to go to the store and get an extra one, which I'll finish up a little bit later, but just give you an idea of how to basically install the breaker. Now, it's very important that you run your red wires through your CT1 and your black wires through CT2. That's identified right here on the panel box. These are your L1s and these are your L2s. So you have an L1 and L2 and you're just creating a 240 volt system. I still have another breaker to put in here. I just don't have it on hand. That's the two wires. On the back side of the panel, we'll see it here, you'll see L1 and L2. So this is considered L1 and L2. Coming into the breakers, kind of strange that this is considered L1 over here and L2 for the red going into the main load center, but that's what is showing on the diagram on the door. So I'm following exactly what the diagram on the door is saying do. So we'll bring our red, our black, our green, and our white. I just put white tape on a green wire. So this is a number six. This is a number four, a number four. And that green one right there is another number six. They'll come down through that conduit. The neutral feeds right into this neutral. Neutral goes into the house. The uh, red that's coming down through here, right here, comes down around, loops back, it comes into this one. The black comes down, loops around, goes into that one. Then we have um, fuses and a switch, and that then takes it into the house from there. And the white comes in and goes into that way. And now we'll go inside and start working on the breaker inside. And if you're gonna be using a number four neutral wire, Number fours work perfectly in here, no problem. But this neutral bar back here is only capable of going up to six gauge wire. And I'm using a four gauge wire here. So you're gonna need to buy you something like this right here, a neutral lug kit. This is good for the BR and CH type uh, panel boxes. And this is a BR. So what we'll do is attach this lug to that bar then this wire to this lug. Now that we got the combiner box hooked up outside, this is our run that's coming from the AC disconnect, comes up into the service panel. So this is the main service panel. And I'm gonna hook these number four wires into a 60 amp breaker. And I do have a short created on how to calculate what size breaker you're going to need for your solar system. Very important to use the correct breakers in the service panel that you have. So ensure that you're using the breakers that are designed to go on that bus bar. This is an Eaton CH uh, style uh, panel outside that we installed those 20 amps on. That is an Eaton uh, BR style. So you're going to have to buy those 20 amp or 30 amp breakers, whatever your system is sized for. So make sure that you're buying the correct breaker for the panel that you have. Now that we have everything connected outside, we have the wires that are running through conduit that's coming up and entering right here. These are our number four wires that we're going to be using on that 60 amp breaker. And if you're doing something like I have it, um, the conduit ran here, with an LB, then you're gonna need a cover right here. By code, you have to have an access point if you have a setup like this. And once it comes into here, we're gonna take the 60 amp breaker and we're gonna connect the red into here and the black into here. The neutral's already hooked up, it's that white wire right there. That's into the neutral bar. The green comes up and goes in to the ground bar. The ground wire is a number six. Rest of these wires are number four on my current um, setup or the amount of solar that's coming in. That's the size wires that I need. This all changes. No system is a one size fits all. You have to be able to wire or uh, calculate your wiring to appropriately fit whatever 
your circuits are requiring. And that connection should look like this. And it doesn't matter if you have the red wire here or the black wire there or red or black here. You're basically gonna take your breaker and secure it into place in your main service panel. But before you work on it in the main service panel, turn off that breaker and do not work around those entry wires right there. Those lugs will still have live power coming from the street on them. So if you're gonna be doing this type of work, be sure to understand how all of this works. When you're doing DIY work, you're assuming all of the risk. So if you're not comfortable with this, I'm not a licensed electrician. I do have a lot of experience with uh, electricity and the way that systems work. So I'm very comfortable with working in a service load center like this here. And I do have the experience from being a licensed and certified home inspector to understand these systems. Like I said, I'm not a licensed electrician. I'm not advocating that you do the work. If you're not comfortable with this or you're not willing to assume all responsibility, be sure to reach out to a local electrician to do these connections for you. But a pro tip, be sure to install this wire before you make the connections on these wires. And now that I got my lug installed there, I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire from the main panel up through the AC disconnect into this box here. And the wires are clearly marked here. L1 for the yellow, L2 for the dark gray there. And what I do know is that L1 needs to go to slot 31 and 33 and L2 needs to go to 34 and 36. However, I'm unclear of what is 34 and 36 and 31 and 33 over here. I'm guessing the last four, I'm gonna to have to reach out to technical support and ensure that I'm putting these in the right ones. And I am glad that I reached out to technical support because it was not the last four. It was over two. And then you got line one coming in here, which is your white and your blue. This is line two coming in white and blue. It's actually four over from the last one of these four. And then you put these in, you'll have two open slots here. And you can find this in the user manual as well. I'll have that link in the description below. Then your consumption CTs will go on the main feeders. So for mine, they come up and then they go down and they enter from right there. So I need to get one on line one and line two. Determine which one is line one and line two on your panel. If you could stay away from installing it where it could fall down on those, I would. So I don't think I could fit two of them in this space down here. I wish this was a line, but that's a neutral. I need it on that line and that line and I just don't think there's space. We'll get this plugged in in just a second as well. And you can see that these are marked 2-1 and 2-2. That is line one, that is line two. And something else to pay close attention to are those arrows right there. And you'll see here that I pointed those arrows toward the grid. Got my breaker, the wires coming in that's feeding that breaker. I wanna take the arrows, point them toward the grid. You can also find this in the manual. And this is what a fully installed Hoy Miles combiner box looks like. And if you found this video helpful in any way, be sure to smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out a lot. And if you haven't heard of Hoy Miles before, they offer a lot of different solutions for different types of solar systems that you might have. They have home backup battery systems. They got these microinverters. They got the combiner box and uh, even whole home 
inverter solutions that might be what you're looking for so i'll leave links in the description below on that so be sure to check these guys out and i hope to catch you in the next video where i'll be hooking up the micro inverters to my new array